even though the big, big majority, let's say 95, 96 percent of uh, the school district was Hispanic, the few Anglo are here control that all. We had one, and then the most we had two board members were Hispanic. The rest were Anglo. The, the chairman would always be Anglo. The, the superintendent was Anglo. The principal were Anglo. The assistant principal were Anglo. You know, the council were Anglo. They didn't have to wear socks. They didn't want to. We had to. They didn't have to wear melted. We had to. They could wear their shirt tails out. We couldn't. And, and, you know, on and on and on and on. I mean, for little things that, that we get in trouble, they didn't get, we get spanked all the time. They wouldn't. That's what created you know, that animosity that, that was built in between the Angela and us. And that's where it started from. And then it, it, it got to where it got. As a 15 year old, I got to know and meet prejudice that is reality. It was chopped into my face and it hurt me and it still does to this day. I guess like in the ninth, tenth grade, one day I went home crying because of what, what was happening and I told my mother that I wish I could be more mad because I wanted, you know, those things that they had and I didn't have. What did your mom say? Well, nothing. She just started crying with me. You know, and we were treated differently. We were under pressure not to achieve. We were pushed to the point of failure. So a lot of my classmates, a lot of my friends dropped out. That's why so many people came to high school. I got involved uh, uh, in the summer of 1968. Uh, with a group, like a group called Mexican American Youth Organization, okay, Mayo, and um, we were we were going around throughout the valley, uh, trying to organize uh, groups of young people, basically with that with that with that name. And Ed Chelsea was one of those one of those places, but our contact with Ed Chelsea. Well, had, had, had not, with well, the Edgar Chelsea students was not a direct contact. It came about through their older siblings at the university. We started a committee of students to try and correct the injustice, the prejudice, the racism that we were going through. At first we just started meeting and talking and then yeah, yeah, then more and more people started coming and we started bringing out the issues and, and yeah, and everybody was agreeing and, and then... How uh, did you meet and talk to Oh, she, I don't know. Four months, five months. Well, the walkout was a spontaneous, a spontaneous thing uh, from what I recall. My mother assured me that that morning she'd be there when I walked out. And important to me because you know that was my support. That, that was my my base. And I remember walking out, and the first thing I was looking for was my mother. So, and as soon as I saw her, I felt a lot of relief because uh, you know I, I felt I felt safe. I guess you could say it. she was there. Just like a lot of other people were there. Over the course of these days, there were some students, Spanish Americans. They decided to go against us. They joined the Anglo ranks in attacking us. They attacked us verbally and physically. It was a change that had to happen. But as we were out in front of high school walking, we were in a peaceful march for independent the fairness for education. We were attacked by these people and they had to be restrained. During these days, my fellow students, my brother, his friends were arrested and thrown in jail. Well, I was hoping that we didn't make such a mistake that, that we were going to make kids suffer, which we did. In essence, we did because of the reaction that the school board took. But now, looking back, the price we paid was minimal for what I feel that we gained. So, 
and as a matter of fact, it, most people feel that way here in that area. Something was happening. It, it wasn't, in it Chelsea was an explosion, but it was something that was happening throughout the entire valley. Uh, and I think that, that, that their consciousness was pretty much the same consciousness that, consciousness that we were all experiencing uh, at that point. I, I really think that the Yetkel Chelsea walk out in, in my lifetime was, was probably one of the most significant things to occur in South Texas. I think what, 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 what Yetkel Chelsea walk out did was it, it was a slap in the face to everyone. You know, wake up. The mistake we, that I feel that we made, uh -huh. seriously, mistake was when we did our, our request, we put demands. We should have never called it demands. Of course, we were very young. I was what, 15, uh -huh. one, 16 at the time. We didn't know any better. But uh, we should have, we didn't have any right to be demanding anything. We, we actually, we should have concerns, you know, or something like that. But it's too late. It was, that's the way it happened. A lot of people that tried during these years to take credit for what we did, but they didn't go to the pain, the embarrassment, and the fear that we went through. After we went to court in Brownsville, Texas, and the Honorable Judge Vela, he proclaimed that we were right. We won the case, and the school became a sacred place of education again. People talk about it like that. They see it as something that needed to happen. And back then, I didn't see all the changes that happened because of that. We were doing it just for us, you know, it just it changes for us. We wanted those changes for us. We didn't think about the impact we're going to have you know, five years from now, ten years from now. We didn't think about that. I think it, it very appropriately marks historically the valley changing from, you know, back then a primarily agricultural economy uh, to, a, to a, 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 more, a more mixed uh, economy. Uh, and the, where the focus is away from a traditional uh, agricultural economy, where where the Chicanos were, were were all we were all farm workers. I mean that was that was more than ninety percent of what of what, of what we, I mean of us did. We know, I know, there's still bridges out there, but now we can meet them face to face on an even base, and we don't have to back down to nobody because we stood our ground. So I think that Edgar Chelsea was served as, uh, as a spark for all of these communities to change.